He's seen us through a lot of troubles and trials. How about you folks? In the last year. A lot of things have come up. He's brought us through, but I'm glad for the things that he's kept away from us. Amen. You never know what's at the door, folks, and what he's kept away. But I thank the Lord for that tonight. All right. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to get started with a word of prayer. Mike and Gerald, run down here. Get you more of an exercise. I know you ain't as young as you used to be. <laughs> said, I got Up to the chest now, right just like a grill. I kind of Could have been good or real bad. I'm going to get Brother Mikey this morning to uh, bless this thing as we get started. Uh, if you want to stand and take off your hats, men, and we'll, we'll go ahead and get started this year. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day of life, Father. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to gather together this year, Father. God, just want such a special time to get together, Lord. We ask, Father, that your hand be upon uh, these meetings, Father. Every song, Father, we just pray, God, that we would see you move in a mighty way. Uh, Father, we'd love to see so many souls saved, God. Father, we pray for the Christian, God, Father, for, for strength, God, for, for the things that you want to do in our life, God, to draw us closer to you, Father. Lord, just may you be glorified, Father. That's you, God, not us, God, anything anybody would do, God, would make everything turn to praise yes. and glory for you. Paul said, I'll glory yes. nothing. Save the cross, Father. It's all about you, Father. So, Lord, we love you. We ask your hand to be across. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Where are you at, folks? Come on down. Everybody wants to be. Oh, you get that frog out of your throat singing down here. Come on, everybody. There you go, Josh. How about you, Mike? You gonna come and help us? <laughs> Listen, that's a, that's a joke between me and Terry. For years, I called him Mike. For some reason, he just looked like Mike to me instead of Terry. Come on, brother Mike. And I, that's what I called him for years. And he told me the other day, he said, I was going to get you one of those shirts that said Mike with the circle and the red X, but I'm not Mike. <laughs> I said, yeah, you should have done that. That probably would have helped me a lot. <laughs> There you go, guys. Anybody else? Come on down. Hey, Help listen, us folks, sing. this is your big shock. See, we don't know that you can sing or not. Okay. Amen. Your home church may not let you sing in the choir, but you can sing. That's right. Day. Amen. Come on down. This is your big day. Now, this ain't the heavenly choir, so you may not be able to sing harmony or anything, but one day you will. But I if you can that. sing, come I on down. <laughs> Nobody? <laughs> How many are glad this morning we're going to have a new life? Amen. 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 This whole life that we're living now, my beloved, it's, it's a good life. God's given us the more abundant life right here and now. One day after a while, we're moving out of here for repairs, moving into eternal life. We're going to have a new body. We're going to live in a new country. And everything Jesus said, that behold, I go to make all things, and all means all, you know that, all things new, thank God. I'm looking forward 
to a new life. So let's sing together.
page 333, and then we'll ask everyone, let's just ask everyone to stand, and we'll shake hands and hug somebody's neck. That's not out of order. Amen. Welcome one another today. This is God's temple. Amen. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and so today, God's here. Amen. I know He's here. Because he came in with me, amen, and if you're one of his, he came in with you. And so today, let's just make this place, let's designate this place today as a holy place where God can meet, where God's people can rejoice, where we can be fed from the Word of God, and where this morning that the Spirit of God will have liberty, amen. So welcome one another, let's welcome the Lord to this place. Thank God for 69 years of meeting on this mountain. Amen. What a what a glorious thing that is. And so as we sing this old song, I'll fly away. Be a good day and fly away. Amen.
I've got, to, I've had this scripture on my heart for the last oh, month or so to do up here before we got started. And I got talking to my good brother here, and he told me that's what his sermon was going to be about this morning. And then the Wilda told me she had an idea about the same verse. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. Amen. Amen, folks. We quoted that up at Hager Hill for what, four years, five? About six years before all well, the way the world was going. I believe there's a lot that you start seeing it showing up on the Facebook and all over on TV and everywhere. And I believe it had a dramatic effect on the way that this world, this our country is trying to turn. There's people kicking against it. But folks, if we continue to repeat that verse every day and we get it in our hearts and in our minds, we can continue to see change until the Lord comes back in. Now, we'll, we'll get a whole lot better. But amen, maybe we won't have to endure as much as we did. We've got to quit turning our cheeks, amen, and let them slap our brains out. We've got to start standing up for what we believe in. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Give, our, give the choir here a big hand this morning. Brother Larry Dale Lassen from over in Elliott County. He was a pastor over at Watson Enterprise Baptist for about 30 years. He was 20 some. Well, I thought it was longer than that. I'm over. Yeah, you are older than me. <laughs> Not by much, but you are older than me. Uh, just love this man. He loves the Lord with all of his heart. And the Lord impressed upon me last year to have him come up here and preach today. And, uh, he told me he wasn't going to do it there for a long time. But I guess the Lord got a hold of him and he changed his mind. We went. So make welcome Brother Larry Dale last this morning. Listen to the words that he says this morning. Amen. He dropped me here. I feel like a plane pilot or something with this thing on. How many is glad to be alive and well this morning? We can look and we'll get into scripture in a minute, but I, I fall. I wish I'd have given you money. There ain't a one here this morning that shouldn't have got up and praised the Lord and thanked Him for what He's done for. He's healed us, He's saved our family, and He's answered our prayers. Uh, so I thought this morning just starting out. Who wants to have a good time this weekend? So I think the first thing we ought to do is maybe just give him a little praise this morning. And I, I'm going to sing a verse of a song, and if you'd like to thank the Lord and uh, praise Him, just get up and lift your hands. And the song is, is like this. Say I just want to find you, Lord, for every time you heard me. I just want to thank you for always being back. When I was so down, I doubt what you came along. I made me want to shout. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If I had a thousand lives to live, I'd live them all for my Lord. He's been so good to me. If I didn't believe that I could afford, listen to it. He's made a good time out of my bad man. Lord, you've been the best friend. But I ever had. I just 
Amen. But he said, I didn't need to brag about it or boast about it. He took cut. He made room for me because some of the Jews unbelief and he grafted me in. And I'm not to say that I'm better than the Jews. Come on. But I'm grafted into the same rootstock that they are, even though it wasn't natural. So for that reason this morning, I can call out to Almighty God. If they think it was just for the people of old, it's for the people of the New Testament Amen. too. Amen. Amen. Then we get down, I'm going to read about two verses here. And Solomon said, The Lord had appeared unto Solomon. This is Nebuchadnezzar chapter 12, verse. By night and said unto him, I have heard their prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. Then he goes on in 13 and he said, Now listen, Solomon, you tell them this. If I shut up the heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send a pestilence among my people, you tell them this, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked way, then I will hear from heaven and forgive them of their sin and will heal their land. Amen. I believe today, just as sure as I'm a standing here that I can call out to an almighty God this morning if I've got troubles or if I've got problems and He will answer. His ear is not too loud or His arm's not too short that He can't reach out and help us this morning if we need, a need help. And boy, when pestilence comes up on us, the people I have drafted in, place is the disease or different manners of things come up on us, let's just go to Jesus. That's how we get action this morning. And that's how we get help. We were, uh, we, you, if prayer works, uh, for a lot of people, yeah, I can take you plumb through the Bible. I believe in Hebrews. It said that. And in uh, sundry times and divers manners, God spoke to the prophets. And we'll stop right there and come back and take the rest of that verse. I can read even out of the Old Testament where God blessed His people. I read about a woman, funny, hard times and hit her place. And, uh, 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 her husband had died and the creditors was coming and they was going to take her sons into a bondman and she didn't know what to do but you know what? God had the prophets lined up at that day to tell the people what to do and she went into the prophet and he said what can I do for you? And he said what do you have in the house? And she said nothing but a little bit all and this day and time that was a, a violent commodity. That's what uh, they would use it as life oil or they would use it as fuel. They would use it as cooking oil. We're talking about olive oil. they make perfume out of it. It was a valuable commodity. And he said you go and buy every vessel. He said he didn't just say go over to your neighbors and get one. He said you go abroad and buy all that you can buy. And said when you get them said you go behind closed doors and you begin to pour. And buddy, her and her son did this. I don't know how big her pot they had, but they were pouring in a pot and look, and they were still in all of the way and they started back. Then they poured another, and they filled it up. And then she called her son and said, bring me another pot. And they said, why? We run out. And even the part, I believe that she started with, I still had on. Ain't she glad this morning that if you got a little oil that comes out, you can let it run off on the other people and fill them up too. I read in the Bible about another man. How prayer works today. If you want to pray, you've been part of his people. You got you can do that this morning, but if you're here and you're lost. Only thing, you need to pray for repentance this morning. You need to pray for help for the Lord. Then you can call on God to help you and your family. And I thought about a man by the name of Hezekiah. And old Hezekiah, buddy, he tied a sickness unto death. Thank 
been a ball come upon him. And the old prophet Isaiah, God told him uh, to settle down and tell old Hezekiah the bad news. How many of you got bad news before the doctors come in and tell you things wasn't too good or wasn't going to be too good? I've been there, but God twice in the last few years they talked about putting the pacemaker and the fibrillator in me. Well, thank the Lord, I still don't have one. I don't know what the day in the head hole. They told me one time, I went in, they said, you've got 27 spots on each lung. That was four or five years ago. He said they could be cancer, but I don't think they are. But you know what? Them 20 some spots are still there, and I feel here today and alive and well. That's what God can do for you today. Amen. You want to call up on him. And old Isaiah went in and told him, said the gig is up, has a kind. Said you're going to die. Said get your house in order. Hey, everyone here today, if the Lord don't come back, we're going to die. Get your house in order this morning. Amen. Are you ready to be Bless called up at this time before judgment? You know what old head guy done? He didn't go have him a big pity party. He didn't get down and lay down and say, I'm going to bed and give it up. The pain is over. The Bible said that he turned his face toward the wall and he began to cry out to the Almighty God and he began to weep here. He began to pray and get humble and poor old Isaiah could even get out of the courtyard. But God told him that you go back and you tell him that I've heard his cry and I've heard his prayer and I'm going to grant him 15 more years. I don't know how many more years I've got, but whatever they are, I want to work for the Lord while I'm you this morning. Amen. Bless him. Bless him. He even, for a witness, made the old shadow or made the time go back. Hey, Amen. What can we compare him to this morning? Or what can we liken him to? There ain't nothing to compare him with. Will you say, preacher, at this old test? What about the old man by the name of Blind Boy May? Just said, but I don't know how he got there for morning. I don't know if he was able to get there by himself or somebody had to leave. But Lord, he was there. He didn't have no sign up, I don't think like you see at all these uh, intersections of uh, getting off the interstate and here and there. But he 